Oh, I have a wonderful electronic invention I want you to see. It, it looks something like this. Welcome to Life Effects, the channel where I do stuff with effect. Obviously this episode is about sky replacement. This is a clip from a collaboration project I have going on with the guys from Relab. I don't want to reveal too much, but it is a VFX heavy project. We only had one day of shooting, which means we had to just go with what we had at the moment and fix everything in post. This scene for example. Some idiot didn't change the camera setting and tried to film with sky in the background. What an idiot. So first thing obviously we have a camera move here, so we need to track the footage. In this case the built-in camera tracker works fine. Oh that was fast. <clears throat> Never mind. As you can see the track is pretty solid, so we can choose some points and create the 3D camera. In the next step I'm gonna do things a bit different than your usual sky replacement. Instead of using just an image of the sky I want to replace, I'm gonna create an element 3D layer. One great feature of element, the environment. Of course besides of element 3D you need sky maps to do this. I have the flight kit from Video Copilot, so I'm covered. And I happen to know the first sky map is exactly the right one for this purpose. I have to downscale it to 2K. Now I only have to activate the environment to see the result. And you can see why it's so damn good to use Element 3D for this purpose. Not only do you have a high quality sky, you have full control over the environment. But first you have to make it visible. Go to the render settings, physical environment and show in background. This is all well and good, but first we need to see this sky through our footage. And for this we put our footage above our sky layer. And we use the effect Luma Key. We change it to Key Out Brighter and then adjust the threshold. What that does is, we want to key out what is brightest in this shot. And by increasing the threshold, we take much more content out of this selection. This is a bit difficult with a blown out sky like this. So we want to increase the contrast between the sky and the foreground. To achieve that I use the effect curves and I put it before the luma key effect. With this the sky is even brighter than before and the foreground is easier to separate. So now we want to get the threshold of the luma key to the point where the important parts of the foreground are visible and the sky is still not visible. This seems to be pretty good. Let's watch a quick preview. This might not look like it, but we are halfway there. Now we have to solve one problem at a time. And the most obvious might be the most easiest to solve. Some parts on the wall are as bright as the sky, so they get also keyed out. So I just go ahead and duplicate my footage and I'm going to manually animate a mask for the wall. First problem solved, next one. Even if I would be able to make the perfect key, the sky is just not matching the footage. But since this is an element 3D sky, I can easily adjust the lighting setting in the element layer. This is getting closer and closer to the point where I want it to be. 
And as the next step, I want to give the sky a bit of movement to make it look a bit more natural. If this would be a normal image, like in an unusual sky replacement, I would have to just move the picture from left to right or right to left. But in this case, I just can go into the element layer and rotate the environment. As you can see, you have full control over the element 3D sky dome. So I keyframe the rotation around the Y axis, but it's important to not overdo it at this point. So I'm starting with zero degrees rotation, keyframe it and go to the last frame and I bring it to about negative 8 degrees. It looks okay, but let's try it again with about 6 degrees. Hmm. I like it. So now we have to tackle the biggest remaining problem. There's a very visible halo around every piece that's near to the key. So we have to put something behind the previous Luma key. And we are gonna use the effect Refine Soft Matte, but since this effect will increase your render times, sometimes you might get away with a simple alternative. And this effect would be the Matte Choker. If you play around with this effect, you can might get the result you are looking for. But it mainly works if you can make the difference between your foreground and background very clear. In this scenario, this is not the case. So I get rid of the matte choker and go back to the refined soft matte effect. And right off the bat, you see there's a much better result. Main problem here is that there's a lot of shattering. But you can reduce that by this option, Shatter Reduction, and mainly by decreasing the decontamination. Damn, what a word for the German tongue. In the end I completely deactivated the decontaminate edge color. I also adjusted the environment a bit more to match the footage. And that was it. Let's see the outcome. I hope you liked this episode about Sky Replacement and a first glimpse about our project with the codename Resistance. I have quite a lot of VFX shots ahead of me and I'm trying to release a tutorial about the stuff I'm gonna do with those shots. So stay tuned for the next episode by subscribing to this channel, like and comment to help me out and come back to the next episode of Life Effects.